Welcome to the Level 1 Corporate Finance Summary video series. This video is a summary of the reading on Working Capital Management. What is Working Capital? It consists of the current assets and current liabilities. Different companies will have different amounts of working capital and this slide shows the internal factors and external factors that impact how much working capital a given company needs. So internal factors, company size and growth rates, organizational structure, sophistication of working capital management, borrowing and investing positions, activities and capacities. This is fairly logical so you can figure out the fact that a company that has a high growth rate will obviously need more working capital and so on. External factors include banking services, interest rates, new technologies, economy and competitors. Managing and measuring liquidity. Liquidity is the extent to which a company is able to meet its short term obligations using assets that can be readily transformed into cash. Liquidity management refers to the ability of an organization to generate cash when and where needed. The primary sources of liquidity include the cash balance that a company has, trade credit where a company can buy from suppliers and pay later, and a short-term investment portfolio. Secondary sources of liquidity which ideally is not something a company would want to get into include negotiating debt contracts. So we owe a company money, we negotiate and say we'll pay you back later. That is a secondary way of sort of getting liquidity. Liquidating assets, selling your assets, you get money in the short run but you are hurting yourself in the long run. Filing for bankruptcy protection, so you get protection from paying off your creditors. Again, this helps in the short run but in the long run people will not want to do business with you. From a testability perspective, just remember these phrases. When we say drag on liquidity, this is when receipts lag. So for example, uncollected receivables. So you are doing everything you need to do but suppliers are not paying you fast enough. So there is a lag. Or inventory is obsolete. You've built the inventory, you've spent the money but you cannot sell it so it's obsolete. These are drags on liquidity. You are not generating your cash. A pull on liquidity is where you have to pay too quickly. For example, you your suppliers say that cash on delivery. They will give you your raw material but you need to pay them immediately. Liquidity contributes to a company's credit worthiness. This is a very straightforward concept. If you are a bank and you are lending money to a company, then a company that has a good liquidity position will be one that you will lend to more easily because it is more credit worthy. So good liquidity ratios mean or help the credit worthiness of a given company. What is the corporate finance link here? The link is that if you are evaluating a company and the liquidity is good, that would imply that this company can raise funds at a relatively lower cost. For a company that has a poor liquidity situation, it would have to raise money at a relatively higher cost. Liquidity ratios and measures. Almost all these ratios are ratios that you've also seen in FRA. So I will not say them all out aloud, but I expect you to know all these ratios and you should be able to just look at the ratio name inventory turnover and immediately know that the that it involves inventory and inventory is going to be in the denominator because it's a balance sheet item and the corresponding income statement item is cost of goods sold and the balance sheet item is typically the average for that period and then the number of days of inventory is the inverse and then multiplied by 365. At this stage you need to know these ratios well. And then operating cycle and cash conversion cycle are also items that you've seen before and you need to know them well. Managing the cash position. The purpose of managing a firm's daily cash position is to make sure there is sufficient cash. You don't want to be in a position where you need to pay suppliers and don't have money. Do not want negative balances because it is expensive to borrow on short notice. Do not want very high balance because that would imply an inefficient usage of your funds. Companies should recognize the major sources of cash inflows and outflows in order to forecast and manage their cash position. So, Fairly straightforward as a company you need to know how much money you are getting from where you are getting and when are you getting the money and then what are the various 
outflows. Investing short term funds. Short term funds are a temporary store of funds that are not necessarily needed in a company's daily transaction. Short term working capital portfolios consist of securities that are highly liquid, less risky and shorter maturity than other types of portfolio than other types of investment portfolios. So here you would typically invest in T bills, three month T bills, six month T bills. So the extra cash that a company has that it's not expecting to need on a daily basis, it might invest in liquid, safe, short term instruments such as T bills. Generally working capital portfolios consist of short term government securities and short term bank and corporate obligations. Exactly what these securities are depends on the country you are in. When you invest short term funds you obviously need to know what sort of a yield you are getting. So this connects with what you saw in quant. You need to know the bank discount yield which is face value minus price divided by face value into 360 over T. And why are we doing this here? We are saying that in most countries a very popular short term investment is government T-bills. When you invest in a government T-bill you need to understand the return measure associated with government T-bills. If you are investing in money market instruments and you are getting a money market return then you also need to know the money market yield. The objective of this short term investing is to earn a reasonable return while taking on limited credit and liquidity risk. The last thing you want is put your money in a short term fund and the fund crashes. So you will invest in safe instruments. Liquid instruments means that if you want to sell then you can sell easily at market price. You need to create an investment policy statement and this will make more sense given that you've seen portfolio management. So since an investment is involved you need to have a formal IPS which should identify the purpose, the authorities, limitations and any restrictions. And IPS might say that we need to have very safe investments, we are only allowed to invest in government securities and very highly rated corporate instruments and so on. The investment strategy can be passive or active. A passive strategy means that you simply set rules. So set rules that this is what we are allowed to buy. An active strategy is as the term implies more active. So here you might try to match your cash needs with investments. If you know that you have a major cash need after two years then you might put that amount of money in a two year security. And then obviously you need to evaluate your short term fund management. So you need to look at what sort of a return your short term fund manager is getting and then compare that with benchmarks. So compare that with the sorts of returns that other companies in your industry are getting. Evaluating receivables management. There are many ways of measuring accounts receivable performance. Most deal with how effectively outstanding receivables can be converted into cash. A simple measure is the number of days of receivables but this does not consider the age distribution within the outstanding balance. This is a number that just tells you on average how long it takes you to collect. But in this segment of the reading they give you a, a slightly more comprehensive measure and this is how it goes. For a given company the outstanding amount in the month of Jan for example that is less than 31 days outstanding is this. 31 to 60 is this. The first thing that you do for every month is figure out for each bucket less than 31 days is a bucket 31 to 60 is a bucket. What percentage of the outstanding amount falls within each bucket. You would be concerned if most of the outstanding is in the 90. over 90 day bucket. So you come up with these percentages. Then something that will be given to you for less than 31 days on average the collection days is 15. In this category on average it is 45. You do not calculate this number. This is given to you. And then you do 15 times 40 percent. Where is this 40 percent coming from? Over here. And then 45 into 30 percent which is coming from here. And then you have the days into weight and then you add all these and you get 46.5. This is the weighted average collection period for Jan. And the higher this number the larger the concern. That means that on average it is taking a longer time to collect. Managing accounts payable and short term financing. So now we are going to the right side of the balance sheet. Accounts payable represents an important source of funds and should be managed well. So 
the good thing about accounts payable is that you don't need to pay interest to your suppliers so the more you can generate through accounts payable the better as long as you don't get your suppliers unhappy if you make your suppliers unhappy what will they do they will tighten their terms so you don't want to pay too early because this is a low cost source of funds in fact zero cost don't pay too early unless the company can take advantage of discounts so there will be a scenario where you are told that if you pay within 10 days you will get a 2% discount or something to that effect if that does happen then there is a formula for calculating what is the cost of not availing the discount and i'm not going to go over this formula now but simplistically it is based on time value of money and you are trying to say if i pay on time how much do i pay if i pay later then how much do i pay this formula from the curriculum looks complicated but if you follow my regular video it's not too bad next point is short term financing short term financing strategy should focus on ensuring that a company maintains a sound liquidity position now i'll just draw a small distinction accounts payable in a sense is also financing but when we use the term financing or debt or borrowing we are referring to interest based financing with accounts payable we are generally referring to getting money from your suppliers without having to pay interest so short term financing should focus on ensuring that a company maintains a sound liquidity position so you need to have maybe lines of credit with different banks you need to ensure sufficient capacity to handle peak cash needs maintain sufficient sources of credit so you should not just rely on one source of credit maybe you should have multiple sources ensure that the rate at which you are borrowing is cost effective short term borrowing could be from banks or from non bank sources now there is an example in the curriculum and then a practice problem at the back that makes you calculate the cost of borrowing using line of credit using banker's acceptance and using commercial paper in this crash course i'll not go over that example but it's part of the regular videos if you have time you can go over those examples and learn how to do the calculation the one high level remark i'll make is that with banker's acceptance and commercial paper we subtract the interest up front so these are referred to as discount instruments with a line of credit you pay interest at the end of the period so you do not subtract it from the denominator or in most cases where there is a commitment fee you need to pay an extra fee that also needs to be factored into your cost calculation if you found this lecture helpful then i'll be very grateful if you can do three things for me number 1 like this video number 2 like my facebook page and number 3 visit analystforum.com and there add my logo to your studying with profile you can see this slide for help on how to do that thank you very much and good luck with your studies